worry and anxiety are two of your greatest enemies in life. And I think we can all agree that there will be some things that you can control and you will worry about. There will be things that are beyond your control that you will worry about. And even though it's so simple to caught up in worry, Jesus taught us in one of his parables that we shouldn't worry about the future. The Lord was admonishing us to be present in the moment, to be at peace today, and to be joyful today because tomorrow will take care of itself. You will always magnify the lack or pain in your life if you spend all of your time and energy worrying. Worry is only concerned with if, as in if, I can't pay this, if I don't get treated, or if they'd find something. Instead, you should decide to adopt a new outlook and stop worrying about the future. A thankful attitude that includes thanking God for today and His goodness even as you wait for your miracle. Despite the fact that you lack some things, you are giving thanks to God for what He has given you. When you do this, you magnify Jesus Christ rather than your problem. But Matthew chapter 6 verse 25 to 27 has the following to say about this. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about tomorrow. Do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Isn't life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? In Matthew chapter 6, verse 34, the Bible also states, Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Christ tells us not to be anxious, and that is sufficient justification for having faith in His future plans. God calls us to the present to live our lives in Him, regardless of whether we are boasting or worrying. God is present with us right now, so it is impossible to find Him by daydreaming or worrying about the future. When today arrives, both He and we will be there. I think the Lord wants us to stop fretting, considering what might happen tomorrow, and expanding effort and energy considering what might happen tomorrow or even what ought to happen. In this very second and on this day, you are blessed. Don't worry about all the what-ifs that we might encounter in the future. Such as what if there is a health concern, an economic setback, or even some unimaginable type of problem. As one pastor once advised, instead of borrowing trouble for the future, move forward by faith rather than sight. Therefore, I urge you to be mindful of the Lord today and to be mindful of your soul and mind. To do that, remember verse 24 of Psalm chapter 118. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 7 and 8, the Bible reads, But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its root by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. To put it another way, we have to give up full control in order to fully trust God. It involves losing faith in oneself or another person. When you stop attempting to solve the problem on your own and turn everything over to God, you yield to Him and give up all control, which goes against everything we've been taught and trained to do in this day and age. We are expected to stay on top of our emails and messages, manage our careers and businesses, as well as the futures and education of our children. 
Control is necessary in so many aspects of our lives today, but the Lord operates differently in this regard. I'm not advocating that you shirk your obligations. Do your part, that is what I'm saying. You work hard and arrive at work with the right attitude, but you don't get into a conflict over a position or a promotion. When you believe you deserve more, resist the urge to be envious. Those are the situations in which you give up initiative. Cease attempting to solve the problem on your own and turn it over to the Lord. I am trying to get your attention by saying that you must acknowledge that you have limited control over most things in your life. The only things you have control over are your daily effort and attitude. You must leave the rest in God's hands. Ask God to step in and help your boss or supervisor in that situation. Ask God to intervene so that He can control the people who influence your children at school. Ask the Lord to recognize and honor your efforts. The Bible states that you are blessed when you put your trust in God and your hope in Jesus. From my experience, when you fully trust God, he becomes your strength when the situation ahead seems hopeless and when the mountain ahead seems too big for you to climb. I want to exhort you to put your hope and trust in the Lord Jesus. There is a God who can create a path when it seems impossible. Instead of putting our trust and hope in human promises, human resources, or human abilities, we should do so in the eternal God's promises. Therefore, child of God, sing if necessary. Put your faith in God. Raise your hands in worship if necessary. But make sure that you are trusting in the Lord. When times are tough, lock yourself in a closet and pray. Do whatever you need to, but always keep your faith in Jesus. Even when you are facing hardship, God can still hear your cries. Keep your eyes fixed on His unchanging word. According to Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, it says, But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. If you're wondering, how do I find my strength? There is strength in waiting on the Lord. The solution is right in front of us. We just need to wait on God. We can worship, pray, and meditate on God's word while we wait. But we must never give up. Never give up praying to God and never stop doing so. He will present you with that opportunity and that blessing in their ideal circumstances. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. In Isaiah chapter 40 verse 30 to 31 it says, Even when the wait for God seems never ending, keep going.